Hi, I'm Sam Pocker. I'm at Amoeba in Hollywood, and this is what was in my Amoeba bag. I just want to eat pizza and take a First thing I'd like to talk about is this Pizzicato 5 compilation. I like the stuff on their later albums, but I wanted to check out their earlier sound. Can I open this? Sure. Yeah, okay. I think, yep, it has it. It has the fake American Express card, so you can identify yourself in public as a member of the Pizzicato 5 fan club. This is my favorite Duran Duran record. I think it's a record about having to constantly prove your worth over and over again in an industry based entirely on imaginary nonsense. It's uh, ironic that it's still not on streaming. And of course, this was the first record they made with Nile Rodgers uh, since the 80s. I love British pop music, and I haven't actually seen this on a CD before. Someone out there, lower the tone. I mean, this record came out so good that she married the producer. about British pop that you like? I like to hear American melodies that are stripped of all their hyperbole and reinterpreted with more of a focus on the vocal and the beat. I have one Kirstie McCall record that I love that I listen to over and over and over again and I thought I should have more of her records. There's a guy works down the chin shop, swears he's Elvis. She was on Stiff Records she sang back up on Talking Heads Naked. Um, it's rumored that she did the sequencing for U2's Joshua Tree album. I mean, she had a really enviable career, and unfortunately, her legacy has sort of disappeared in the streaming age. Okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? Oh. I had this CD when I was a teenager. I grew up listening to a lot of like freestyle, electronic dance music, stuff like Lisa Lisa, Full Force, Pretty Poison, and Mars, I don't know if you remember Mars. And I got really into the art of noise for a while when I was a teenager, like Ann Dudley, Trevor Horn, all that ZTT stuff, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Um, but a record like this, which was later on in that era, these records were really recorded and produced for this format, for CD. Disc men were still new, listening to compact discs with headphones was still new, and if you take this CD today, 30 something years later and you put it in a disc man and you put on those headphones that came with that disc man 30 years ago it's still going to sound about a billion trillion times better in this format than in any other format and i think bill drummond and and jimmy caudy when they withdrew the klf catalog i think they knew that that the technology was going to change and they wanted to keep it this way and it was the only way to really keep it this way was just to delete the catalog so for my last record in my bag, I have the Beach Boys Pet Sounds, this reissue. Uh, in my opinion, the Beach Boys are arguably the most influential band ever to come out of L.A. So this version has two discs. It's got a CD. Uh, with the original record in mono, which is my personal favorite, and then it's got a DVD audio 
with uncompressed stereo mix and a Dolby surround version. I mean, in the same way that Brian Wilson was obsessed with Sgt. Pepper, I think it's just as easy to be obsessed with pet sounds today. I actually unfollowed a woman I was attracted to on Instagram because she said she didn't like the Beach Boys. Nobody needs that kind of negativity in their life. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thanks so much for inviting me to the store. Our pleasure.